Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. The Chamber is proud to be able to bring the Mayor's State of the City Address to you tonight from the Bob Boldrick Theater. As a former chairman of the Chamber Board, Mayor Crowell has made it a point to address our Chamber and the public each January since he was sworn into office in January of 2009. Mayor Robert Crowell, if you did not know, is this, sixth, is this city's sixth mayor since becoming a consolidated municipality in 1969 and the only mayor to be elected to three consecutive terms. Yes, Mayor Marv served three terms, but not consecutively. So Bob, you are the first one since 1969. I think that says a lot. So you weren't discouraged in the first eight years, so you wanted four more. Mayor Bob took over the reins of the city at the height of the recession and has weathered the storms that have come his way. Having a committed board of supervisors and a professional city manager is important in making the daily decisions on how to run this ever more complex city. Tonight on stage with the mayor are supervisors Karen About, Lori Bagwell, John Barrett, and Brad Bonkowski. Our city manager, Nick Morano, is here tonight, but he did not want to be on stage. He would rather be in the audience with you. Following his address, the mayor and the supervisors will come down into the audience to personally answer any questions. We will not be taking questions from the floor. Without further ado, Mayor Robert Crowell. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm honored to stand in front of you once again to deliver the State of the City Address and to highlight the successes and challenges of Nevada's finest city, our very own Carson City. To start, I want to acknowledge and thank the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event, as they've done all the time in the past. Let me also thank my fellow board members who were uh, introduced by Ronnie. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. Both organizations, one private and the other public, are representative of what I wish to convey tonight, one community working together to improve the quality of life for all of us. You've heard me say that the people of Carson City are its greatest asset. Our community is comprised of people and businesses who are selflessly devoted to making Carson City a better place to live. In tonight's address, I will talk about what that means as well as discussing the affairs of your local government. Carson City is not, is not merely a collection of neighborhoods. We are one community, indeed one community working together and if I could leave you with one, just one message tonight, it would be just that. The state of our city is strong. The state of our community is even stronger. At the risk of leaving someone out, I would like to mention just some, and I repeat, just some of the examples of what makes us a great community. Most recently, our community experienced one of the worst storms we've seen in recent years. Heavy snows in the mountains, followed by rain, created the perfect storm for flooding. You won't find a better example of our community and our state coming together to minimize injury to persons and damage to property. We have and you have every reason to be proud of the city's proactive response to this extreme weather event. Our stormwater division and the Public Works Department worked overtime to prevent significant flooding. During the storm, our emergency operations center addressed problems, problem areas quickly and kept the public informed. The Public Works Department deployed over 35,000, that's right, 35,000 sandbags and numerous flood barriers. Their preparation and response are major reasons why the flooding damage wasn't as severe as in our neighboring counties. Unfortunately, we still did have major damage, especially to our park and recreation facilities, with many trails severely eroded or some even washed out entirely. But as bad as the storm was, as bad as the storm was, before and during the event, one would see our residents filling sandbags with many, and I repeat, many taking the time to help others. And before and during the event, you could see our residents cleaning gutters and drains in front of not only their own property, but that of their neighbors as well. In other words, doing what they could to help everyone. Our state partners were also heavily engaged. 
from Governor Sandoval to the Department of Emergency Management to the Nevada Division of Forestry, to name a few. I can't say enough about our Public Works Department and all of the other emergency personnel, including those who staff the Emergency Operations Center. Simply put, they were everywhere all the time, symbolic of the old adage, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Let me express our community's heartfelt thanks to each of you, along with our city employees, who are the epitome of another adage, boots on the ground, get it done. As we say in the Navy, and I know I've got some Navy folks in the audience here tonight, bravo Zulu to each and every one of you. Our community's visitors bureau has also been hard at work. This past year, we were proud to host the first race in the Carson City Off-Road Epic Ride Series. I'd like to thank the Visitors Bureau, our city staff, and all the volunteers for their hard work in planning and executing a superb event. Kudos to Kurt Meyer for taking the lead local role on the Epic Ride's private side. From firsthand experience, I can tell you that the participants, that participants and visitors alike loved the race but they loved our city even more. As most of you know, the Carson City Off-Road Race was named the nation's top mountain bike race. That's right, tops in the entire nation. Tops in the entire nation, yeah. <laughs> Residents of other cities may think that it would be hard to improve on that ranking, but they don't know us in Carson City. The 2017 Carson City Off-Road will raise the bar even higher. And ladies and gentlemen, I, as a message from the past, I have every reason to believe that our namesake, Kit Carson, would be proud of us. In previous addresses, I have thanked, the muscle, po I have thanked muscle Powered for their dedication and hard work leading the development of the Ash to Kings Canyon Trail that was such an important part of the off-road race and which has earned national recognition in its own right. I would like to do that once again tonight. I am sure that you will see, I'm sure that we will see muscle-powered volunteers and others stepping up to repair the recent storm damage to our trail system. A big part of the draw for the off-road race is the street fair that takes place in our downtown. This past year, we opened the newly redesigned and reconstructed Carson City Street in our historic downtown. Many cities in, the United, in America and the United States have seen their downtowns decline as tastes in transportation retail and lifestyles change. Many have taken proactive measures to restore the draw of their downtowns, and Carson City now joins that list. I am particularly proud of the work that everyone put into this important project. I want to thank my fellow board members for the leadership they have shown in this 10-year effort, as well as the Downtown Business Association, the Downtown 2020 Group, the Chamber of Commerce, and our Redevelopment Authority Citizens Advisory Committee. Our own Public Works Department, led by Darren Schultz and our city engineer, Danny Rotter, deserve much of the credit for completing this project on time and on budget. As an aside, I am told, as kind of a cute aside, I am told that folks affectionately refer to Carson Street as Rotter's Road. <laughs> I'm probably one of those people. So. A key part of our downtown renewal were public-private partnerships. Muscle Power contributed $16,000 for functional and artistic bike racks. As you know, our community holds the distinction of being a bicycle-friendly community, and the redesign of our downtown makes bike travel safe and attractive in that area. Not to be outdone, the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce led the effort to sell benches and raise money for public art. The Chamber Director and I recently had the privilege of dedicating those benches to those who purchased them in honor of family members and businesses. I look forward to working with our new arts and culture director and the arts community in the design and procurement of public art for our city. Along with downtown, McFadden Plaza is a wonderful addition to our community. A true gathering spot with something for all ages, with free Wi-Fi, uh, no less, provided by SkyFiber. On behalf of our community, let me thank the McFadden family for their generous donation that made the Bob McFadden Plaza a reality. Mark and Jenny LaPiccolo were similarly instrumental in granting the city a right of way to build our new stage on the plaza. The McFaddens and LaPiccolos are de demonstrative, demonstrative of the value of one community working together. Let me also thank the Chamber, the State of Nevada, 
and our city staff for making the Silver and Snowflakes Festival this past Christmas simply stunning. Many have mentioned to me that they have never seen such a beautiful Christmas display in front of the Capitol and up and down Carson Street, and I couldn't agree more with them. And along with the beauty of Christmas lights in the winter, this summer our city will once again be adorned with the beautiful flower baskets in our downtown area. Those baskets were started by our very own Supervisor Abowd and, contributed by the, and, and, continued, uh, and continued by the Greenhouse Project, of which she is also a founding member. Speaking of which, let me say, in my opinion, there is no greater project of greater significance that defines the meaning of sense of community than the Greenhouse Project. Thank you, Karen. The downtown project was only one of three major capital projects that we completed in 2016. Early in 2016, we proudly cut the ribbon on our new multipurpose athletic center, or MAC, as it's commonly known. The MAC was an important part of the projects that the voters approved when they passed the question eight, when they passed our quality of life initiative, question 18, in 1996. I am very pleased to report that the MAC is indeed a first class facility. Residents use the courts and indoor track at drop in times, and we have hosted several tournaments. Additionally, the Boys and Girls Club uses it as part of their, as part of their co use agreement. And earlier this month, we even set up the MAC. And I don't know how many know this, we set up the MAC as an emergency shelter, and I think it only took them an hour to do that. By the way, by way of use statistics, to date, Matt, the MAC has issued 406 passes and serves some 11,547 drop-in patrons, as well as 17 different leagues with 1,661 participants. We also cut the ribbon on, uh, on our new animal shelter in October. Along with the MAC, this shelter is a world-class, no-kill, facility that facilitates the care of vulnerable animals. The shelter includes a surgical suite and other clinical assets. This shelter epitomizes the meaning of Carson Proud. If you have not seen it, please take some time to view the shelter, take a visit, and maybe you might just take home your new best friend. This facility would not have been possible without the caring support of one community working together. The Nevada Humane Society and Carson City's very own Cassie contributed significant funds and volunteer hours to make this shelter a reality. In another example of our citizens working together with their city government for the betterment of our community, this past year we created a new citizens committee, traffic for short, to provide guidance on how to, uh, guidance on how to address the declining state of our roads. Similarly, our Utility Financial Oversight Citizens Committee also performs a valuable function with respect to the use and application of more than $30 million relating to, the, relating to the renovation and upgrading of our water resource recovery facility. Indeed, and I want to emphasize this, all of our city and boards and commissions are made up of hardworking individuals who devote substantial personal time without pay ensuring citizen participation in the many functions of government. They are critical to the quality of life we enjoy in this community and are most deserving of our collective gratitude. Additionally, our community is blessed with a growing list of charitable organizations that provide needed assistance to our residents. Organizations such as Friends in Service Helping or FISH, which in addition to its normal functions will soon open a 39-unit living facility for veterans that facility will be known as Richard's Crossing. I would note that Supervisor Bagwell is a member of the Fish Board and was instrumental in raising the funds necessary to acquire the furnishings for Richard's Crossing. Thank you, Lori. And of course, Richard's Crossing would not be a reality without the private donation of land by the Garth Richards family. Advocates to end domestic violence, which along with Carson Tower Hospital and our health officer, Dr. Pintar, Deputy District Attorney Freilich, Shannon Hess, and Supervisor Abowd, once again, among others, recently worked with the city to stand up a fully staffed sexual assault team, thereby eliminating the really rather inhumane requirement that sexual assault victims somehow get themselves to Reno for care and understanding because such assistance was not available in our community. Ron Wood, which continues its many missions of taking care, many, its many missions of taking care of families in need, with much, with much of the food it distributes being donated by the Greenhouse Project. Partnership Carson City that oversees many community outreach programs targeted, among other matters, drug abuse in our youth community. Circles, led by former Supervisor Shelley Aldean, provides a hand up to families living in poverty. 
Shelley recently received the Governor's Points of Light Award. The Boys and Girls Club that daily strives to enable all young people, all young people to realize their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring individuals. Our Senior Citizen Center that provides a gathering place and tasty food for our senior community. Indeed, its Meals on Wheels program continues to grow each year, reminding us of the necessity of keeping the needs of our seniors in the forefront of our community thought. Pets of the Homeless, a nonprofit entity of national, national prominence that provides food and assistance to what may be called underprivileged animals. And ladies and gentlemen, there are many others. And in addition to charitable organizations, we have a growing list of arts and culture entities that add to the sense of community so important, so important for successful cities. To name but a few, the Brewery Arts Center for bringing us free summer concerts, TEDx, and many other performances and art displays. And I know Supervisor Barrett's wife is on that board. Um, the Capital City Arts Initiative that provides art in various locations in our community, including the Sierra Room, the Brick, and the Courthouse, to name a few. McDonald's, Cal Ranch, Rutledge Law, Champagne Beauty Bar, Charlie B's, and others for bringing us tremendous wall murals at McDonald's North, Telegraph Street, and other locations around our city. If you haven't seen the mural in McDonald's North, I encourage you to take a look. It's simply stunning. The Nevada State Prison Preservation Society that continues to work to create a museum at the site of the old maximum security prison. Ladies and gentlemen, where possible, we should do all that we can to help accomplish that important project. And I know that they have they've reached out to me and asked that I uh, stress how important it is that we get this project on, and I agree with them. The Friends of the Library that operates Browser's Corner and raises funds for our library that now includes a digitorium and online ebooks to check out. The Hop and May Adams Foundation created to advance our community on a variety of fronts, including Adams Hub for entrepreneurs of all ages, and a soon to be open 308 North Curry Street mixed use development. We would not be one community without our civic organizations. Organizations such as Kiwanis, Rotary, Elks, United Latino, Lions, Seroptimus, Masons, and others. Organizations that look for and routinely tackle needed community services. Speaking of which, the Carson Nugget deserves a big pat on the back for providing its annual free Thanksgiving dinner for our entire community and another pat on the back to Walmart for sponsoring Holiday with a Hero organized by our police and public safety professionals. Nor would we be one community without our veteran service organizations such as Honor Flight of Nevada, veteran, the Veterans Resource Center, the Veterans Center at Western Nevada College, the Vietnam Veterans, including Chapter 388, the American Legion, Veterans of Foreign Wars, the Marine Corps League, and many others. Many of those organizations, all of them that tend to the care of our military and veteran community. As a retired naval officer and Vietnam veteran, I am particularly proud of the city website that lists all the organizations in our community that are available to, address, to assist veterans. Much of the information for that uh, list was provided by local Green Zone Coordinator, Marine Gunnery Sergeant and Vietnam veteran Frank Reynolds, who is a recipient of the Governor's Governor's Veteran of the Month recognition, as well as a partner with me on Honor Flight, as, as a Honor Flight participant. As Governor Sandoval rightly states, Nevada is a veteran-friendly state, perhaps the most veteran-friendly state in the nation, and I think it is. Likewise, our community lives up to that designation at the local level. And speaking of our website, thanks to the hard work of our IT folks, this site is now the epitome of transparent government and will only get better as time goes on. Let me also mention the importance of our faith-based organizations in making, sure, in making our city truly one community. These organizations provide not only moral and speech, spiritual guidance, but assistance to those with physical needs such as food and shelter. Indeed, the Church of Latter-day Saints recently opened its doors as an emergency shelter for those in need during disasters. In addition to its other duties, the Salvation Army routinely staffs city-provided shelter services when needed, when they're needed, and I'm sure that there are other, many others whose services include providing assistance to the needy. Examples of community service don't just include adults, but our school-age kids as well. For example, Carson High School's NJROTC cadets raised and donated $2,500 
to five, uh, donated that to five needy families so that they too could enjoy Christmas this past year. Hats off to you young folks and you make the Navy proud. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Education is also a critical component of a successful and sustainable community. We are fortunate to have not only good K-12 public and private ed schools, but Western Nevada College as well. Additionally, the Adams Hub sponsors the new e-program for budding entrepreneurs. These facilities are critical to both the short-term and long-term health of our community. Let me apologize at this time if I did not mention a particular organization or service. It is not meant, nor did I mean it as a slight. As I mentioned, Carson City's greatest assets are its citizens and our businesses, including our manufacturing community, all of whom, and I stress that, all of whom contribute to an economy that supports our quality of life that we so enjoy in this community. I could go on all night about the good works that abound in our community, but let me just say on behalf of our Board of Supervisors and our community, we appreciate all that you do and would want all of you to know how important you are to making us truly one community with a quality of life that is the envy of others. It's what, make, it's what makes Carson proud, and we are proud of you. Your city government is also devoted to ensuring that Carson City is a community that we can all be proud of. I've mentioned some of Carson City's completed capital projects. We have several others that are in progress, which I'll touch on in a moment, but let me ask the question, what about the city as a whole? As to that question, I can report to you that the city is moving in a strong direction. When I became mayor, our ending fund balance or rainy day fund, as it might be called, was almost depleted. It stood right around the statutory minimum of 5%. I'm pleased to report that as the end of the last fiscal year, that fund was at 10.75% or $8.1 million. Our finance folks expect that we may well end this fiscal year with a similar amount, and we'll talk maybe even more. That gives us some options. That, that Those funds, ladies and gentlemen, give us some options as we look at recapitalizing city assets from buildings and grounds to the Sheriff's Office and Fire Department. Your city has managed its finances with a steady hand and continues to maintain its investment grade rating from the major rating agencies. Moody's rates the city at A1 and Standard & Poor's rates us at AA minus. That rating is important as it affects the rating, the rate that we are charged when we issue bonds. It is also a good indicator of how outside independent agencies view the financial health of our community. A good snapshot of the health of our local economy is the growth or decline in taxable sales on everything from automobiles to building materials. As many of you know, sales and property taxes make up the bulk of the revenue that finances government services, including public safety, parks and recreation, and the courts. This current fiscal year, we based our budget on a growth rate of 4% in sales tax revenue. That number when I wrote this, it looked to be about 8% or a surplus or for about a surplus of 900000 And I just got an email, and I know we all got an email earlier tonight from the Nancy Paulson, our finance director, that says that the sales tax revenue for, I think it's the month ending November, uh, were at 16%, leading us to just over 9% growth in sales tax or $1.2 million or a $1.2 million surplus. I don't know how she does it. I always call her good news. Um, it's even better news tonight, you know, and just to be fair, you know, even when the sales tax was declining, I called our finance director good news as well. So These, those increases in taxable sales also indicate a continuing improvement in our employment picture. The city's current employment rate is 5.3 percent, and it's a fast approaching pre-recession level. That said, and I want to emphasize this, we still have met too many wage earners without jobs or working part-time and for some working multiple part-time jobs. And oddly enough, at the same time, we are experiencing a short of skilled labor in our region. We are working hard to improve that employment picture. The city has partnered with our redevelopment partner, the Northern Nevada Development Authority, to attract employers and good paying jobs to our community. Last year, we created the first certified site in the state, the first certified site in the state, a designation that cuts the time it will take for a developer or builder to entitle and construct a new facility. We have worked closely with NNDA to retain and expand our current manufacturing base and attract new manufacturers as well. 
I can report to you that many of the infrastructure improvements recommended in our manufacturer survey have already been completed, including road and drainage improvements or enhancements. Programs such as Jumpstart, high school CET, CTE classes, our library's M1 certification program, and the enhanced CTE courses and degrees offered by WNC will also improve the employment picture in our city and region as we go forward. Home values are also up in Carson City. I don't need to tell any of you in this room or probably on a listening audience how deep the recession was when it hit. Our median home values declined from just over 300,000 a home to 145,000. That number today is $275,000. And several real estate professionals indicate or predict a 7 to 9% increase for 2017 over and above that. There has also been a significant increase in both residential and commercial development. We are seeing new construction in both those categories matching pre-recession numbers. The increase in commercial construction, everything from a manufacturing facility to an office building, is particularly important as these generally represent new jobs for our community. Rates of commercial construction are an important leading indicator of the health of our economy and it's pointing towards a strong 2017. We have already permitted over $20 million of new commercial development through the first six months of, this fiscal, of the fiscal year, and we are on pace <clears throat> to meet or exceed pre-recession numbers in that category. Residential construction is similarly strong with over $25 million of permitted value through the same period. Typically, NAI Alliance, Mr. Bunkowski here, does a bi biannual vacancy study for retail, office, and industrial properties in Carson City. Supervisor Bunkowski reports that they have uh, seen vacancy rates, they've seen vacancy rates in all sectors decline, with the rates for industrial, downtown retail, and residential rentals at levels that are below what are considered a balanced market. As he states, there is a need for new industrial buildings now, and a repositioning of the infill and vacant retail properties that remain to bring retailers into the downtown core. Additionally, housing is another area where we need more supply as the vacancy rate for, re for residential rentals is below 2%. A rate that low makes it difficult to attract businesses because employees have no place to live. A few words about growth. As we talk about growth, it is important to remember that our community has a growth management ordinance that limits the rate of growth on an annual basis. This ordinance has been in existence since 1979 and is one of the only such ordinances I know of in Nevada. Its purpose is to ensure that city services are sufficient to meet anticipated growth and that new development is carefully planned and managed. It is also important to keep in mind that a housing project that is approved for 1,000 units today may have a 10-year building out which equates to 100 units per year. Based on projected growth rates from the state demographer, we expect the city's population to reach between 75 and 80,000 people between 2055 and 2065. The city currently owns, we currently own over 18,000 acre feet of water rights, and of that, we use about 12,000 acre feet on an annual basis, such that even in dry years, we have sufficient reserves to meet our current and future requirements. That said, I more speak for the entire board, prudence dictates that even in wet years, such as the one sh this one appears to be shaping up, we need to keep a watchful eye on our water supply and the effect of, and the effect of growth on that supply. We have worked hard over the past year on water and wastewater, on our water and wastewater uh, infrastructure. The new water resource recovery facility is on budget and well ahead of schedule. We could be well, we could, we well could be cutting the ribbon on that new facility literally one year from now. It will significantly improve the efficiency and reliability as well as, it will, as, well as significantly decrease odor. We also have improved the city's capability to deliver water through the construction of the east-west transmission line. Currently, the city has what are essentially two water systems, one for the east side of our community and one for the west side. This new line will connect both systems and improve the ability to meet our residents' overall requirements. We have also worked hard to be a leader in reducing our energy usage. Carson City owns three uh, solar photovoltaic systems totaling 500 kilowatts. DC. These systems are located at the Public Works campus. Combined, they produce about 813 kilowatt hour, megawatt hours of electricity annually. 
It should also be noted that the Carson City School District has 2,125 kilowatts of solar PV, solar PV installed at its various sites around our community. Further, we are implementing an Energy Savings Performance Contract, or ESPC. This project involves upgrading lighting, lighting to LEDs, installation of high-efficiency condensing boilers, building control system upgrades, building retro commissioning, building envelope repairs, and an HVAC retrofit at City Hall. This $4.2 million project is entirely, and I repeat, entirely self-funded through guaranteed energy savings. Once completed, it will reduce the city's electricity consumption by over 2 million kilowatt hours each year. Natural gas savings will exceed 65,000 therms annually. Energy cost savings are projected to exceed $200,000 per year. And annual greenhouse gas reductions resulting from this project are equivalent to 188 typical American homes or the removal of 376 passenger cars from the road. So what can we expect in 2017? To start, the freeway bypass will finally be completed to Spooner Junction, and the residents on Fairview Drive will finally get some relief. Yeah, you can clap at that. For those of you who haven't, for those of you who haven't driven on Fairview Drive, it, it, it's a disaster, and it's really a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, you, cannot, you can't get in and out. But, uh, as the volume on, on uh, traffic on South Carson Street is reduced, and we think it will be reduced if, when the freeway goes in by about 20,000 cars a day, it will definitely be a challenge to existing businesses. But as the city manager, I always hear, uh, reminds me, that freeway runs in both directions. With the increase in Washoe County sales tax to 8.265%, and I don't blame them for what they do, Carson City retailers have almost a full percentage point advantage in sales tax and a 27 cents per gallon advantage in fuel taxes. We should maximize those advantages. We will also begin the design work on two important capital projects, Curry Street and South Carson Street. Both are funded in part from the 1 8 percent revenue plan. The city has also received more than $5 million from the state for the South Carson Complete Streets project. Both projects are important in different ways to the economic well-being of our community. South Carson, is in, in, in particular, is a center of gravity for retail in Carson City, and it is imperative that we do everything to help our retailers. In an effort to ensure, and I know there's a new retailer who just came in tonight who's out there, you know, so we're going to be looking for you. He's out in the Ribeiro Complex down near Terrible Herbs. In an effort to ensure that, the that in the future we avoid de the deferred maintenance issues we are currently experiencing, City staff has been preparing an asset management plan to address deferred maintenance and the recapitalization of existing assets. Our board looks forward to the details of this plan and has made addressing those requirements a priority. During the lean years, we continued to kick the can down the road. Probably had no other choice. That road has now come to an end and we need to plan for the future. Speaking of roads and not to be cute, I also want to address them. While I am naturally disappointed that voters did not approve the fuel tax indexing, I want you to know that our board is committed to maintaining the condition of our streets to the very best of our ability. As the primary source of uh, road revenue is the gas tax, we have a structural funding problem. We have implemented a UNR developed index and model to evaluate our streets and allocate resources. And as I mentioned, we have also staffed a citizens committee to help us make funding decisions. I should also note the problem facing Carson City is shared by every city, state, and even the federal government. Gas taxes do not generate anywhere near the amount needed to maintain the current street and road systems. That said, and I'll repeat, we remain committed to managing this problem and maintaining the condition of our streets. Ladies and gentlemen, I've gone on for some time, but let me conclude by talking a bit about how my remarks as a whole relate to the theme of this year's address, Carson City, one community working together. I chose that theme because it goes to the heart of what I believe makes a not only great community, but a great community that is sustainable over time. I recently ran across a particularly apt description of what makes a community sustainable and why it is important. That description comes from the sustainability.org website and it reads, and I'll quote this, 
The sustainability of a community depends on creating and maintaining its economic and environmental health, promoting social equity, and fostering broad-based citizen participation in planning and implementation. Communities that engage citizens and institutions to develop sustainability principles and a collective vision for the future and that apply an integrative approach to environmental, economic, and social goals are generally more likely to be successful. Ladies and gentlemen, and mem members of my community, our community, because of your efforts, our community enjoys a unique quality of life. It is because of your efforts that I am proud to report that the health of our city is strong and perhaps even more importantly, well on its way to becoming a sustainable community that embodies not only the spirit of Nevada in the 21st century, but one which we can be proud to pass on to future generations. Thank you again for letting me, for giving me the honor of being your mayor, and that concludes tonight's address. Thank you.